Do you want to create your own trees inside Unreal and then build a full forest with PCG? In this tutorial, we'll start by modeling our trees directly inside Unreal, giving us full control over every part of them, and then we'll use PCG to build our forest. Hello everyone! Today we're going to use Unreal Engine's new plugin to create a dynamic forest. First, you need to enable the Procedural Vegetation Editor plugin. Next, enable Nanite Foliage as well. To get familiar with this new feature, go to the Plugin folder, open Procedural Vegetation Editor Maps, and load Zoo. These are trees created with the plugin. As you can see, because they use bones, they have subtle movement in the trunk, and you can even switch the leaves to fall or winter colors by adjusting the settings. To open the plugin, go to the Foliage menu, select Procedural Vegetation, choose any example, and open it. Here you'll see four groups of nodes, each representing a different type of tree. For example, in the first group, the main node is the crown, which allows you to control the size and shape of the tree using settings like radius. The next node is gravity, which lets you apply directional gravity to pull branches in different directions. With phototropism, you can bend branches upward or inward, simulating natural light-seeking behavior. The scale node is straightforward. Next is Build 3D Mesh, which is extremely useful. With this, you can reduce mesh density, something very important for large scenes. As you can see, you can easily reduce the number of branches and even simplify the trunk. Then we have the bones section. In my opinion, having too many bones isn't necessary, and it's better to keep their number low if possible. Next is the foliage palette, where you can assign different branch and leaf types to your tree. The second to last node is Foliage Distributor, which lets you control the number of generated branches and leaves, and add lots of variation.
Finally, in the output section, you can choose a folder, give your tree a name, and choose the output type, either static or skeletal mesh. If you check the output folder, you'll see three assets, skeletal mesh, skeleton, and physics asset. In the skeleton asset, you can adjust the animation poses as well. If you want your trees to move like the ones in the sample scene, you'll need to create a blueprint for each tree and add them to the level. After creating a blueprint, add an instance skin mesh component. Select your tree as the skeletal mesh, then add a wind transform provider so the wind affects it. To make the tree visible, add an element under instances. Now we have a tree that reacts to wind. we can create a new level and bring our trees in. As you can see, I've created several tree variations using the same setup. Now let's build a forest using these trees and PCG. First, we create a PCG graph and then a spline blueprint with a tag. Using the Get Spline Data node in World Actor mode, we assign that tag to the PCG. Next, we add a spline sampler and switch it to interior mode. To test it, we connect a static mesh spawner and assign a cone mesh to verify everything works. Then, using density noise and density filter, we reduce some of the interior points to create a lighter forest.
To add our tree blueprints to PCG, we use the Spawn Actor node and assign our first tree. As usual, we add a Transform node to introduce variation. We can copy these last nodes and invert the density filter to place a different type of tree in the opposite areas. To add a third tree type, we copy again and use difference to subtract points and place another tree variety. We can also enable Unbounded Spline Sampler to allow trees to spawn beyond the PCG boundary. After that, we can add additional plants by adjusting their values and build up the forest even more. In the end, we'll have a dynamic forest like this, 